This is pre-calculus section 3.1, exponential functions and their graphs. <clears throat> we're going to be looking at the graphs, and in chapter 3, we're going to be dealing with exponentials and logarithms. And we'll get to logarithms a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to go through this one kind of quickly. I'm going to have it already written up, which I don't usually do. I apologize, but I, I need to get this done fast. Pause when you have to, when you need to copy down some information. <clears throat> now, a de definition of exponential function here f of x is equal to uh, b to the x. The base is b. The exponential is x. And so if it's an exponential function, the variable is in the exponent. x to the third is not an exponential function because there is no variable in the exponent. And so um, b has to be greater than 0. If it's less than 0, we get confused because the exponent could be even, odd, square root, lots of different things. So we don't have a b that's negative or 0 is trivial. And then b can't be 1 because um, that's trivial as well, because that would just give us a function that's y equal to 1. So here's the general form. If you have a, a constant out in front, that would be the initial value, because if I plug in 0 here for x, this becomes 1, and so y equals a at when x is uh, 0. That's the exponent. b is the base. So there's some terminology for you. Uh, for the first one, you know, all you have to do is plug this into your calculator and you can go ahead and do that. Um, one of the things, though, is that you should be able to kind of guesstimate what this is. So if I take 0.3 to the fourth power, which is close to 4.2, I know 3 to the fourth is 81. So I'm going to get 0 0.0081 when I do my decimal places. And so that would be an estimate. And then if I do it to the 4.2, I'm going to get this. Yes, if we raise a number that's less than 1 to a higher power and keep on progressively higher, it actually decreases. And that will be borne out by our next graphs. So why don't you pause this and go ahead and graph these two situations, and then we'll talk about them. Please come back. OK, now with this, if I graph y equals 2 to the x, that's an exponential that you're familiar with, and that just grows um, without bound. Now, if I take 2 to the negative x, however, that's going to be a decreasing function because if I have a negative exponent, that means that I'm going to uh, move things to the denominator. So if I look at here, y equals 2 to the negative x, that's the same thing as y uh, equals 1 over 2 to the x. And then I can group the 1 half, and so this number is less than 1. If you notice, when this number is less than 1, what happens to my curve? Well, it's strictly decreasing. When I say this number, I mean b. So if b is less than 1, I'm going to be de decreasing. If b is greater than 1, I'm going to be increasing. That's borne out over here again, uh, 0.3 to the x. b is less than 1, and so I'm going to be decreasing. If I raise it to the negative x, what that does is that moves it again. And so this is 3 tenths. And if I switch the 3 tenths around, I'm going to get 10 thirds. And so that number is greater than 1, so I'm going to be strictly increasing. So that's some examples of the graphs. You know what happens when you have different values of b. OK, now the next example, what happens is that you'll get some problems that have uh, it has variables in the exponent. It is an exponential. You could graph this in your calculator, put y1 equal to this, y2 equal to this, and find the points of intersection, which we've done many times. You can solve any equation like that. However, we want to try to make the bases the same. So if I look at this base as 3, this base is 27. Is there any way that I can rewrite 27 to have a base of 3? And sure enough, 3 to the third, that works out very well. So 3 to the third is equal to 3 to the x minus 1. The 1 to 1 property simply states that if these bases are the same, then I can set the exponents equal to each other, solve it out, x is equal to 6. So that would be the variable there. Check it out, there it is. Okay. Similarly here, I have 1 half and I have 16. When I see that, I see the 1 half and I think, oh, I could do a base of 2. 16, I can do a base of 2. But if I do this one with a base of 2, I need a negative exponent. And the negative is distributed amongst both of the x and the 4. So make sure that you shoot that through. 16 is 2 to the 4th. Bases are the same. 
you can set the exponents equal to each other and then you can solve for x it's nice to be able to do this and that sets you up for some things that we do in logarithms as well transformations why don't you pause this before I show you the graphs and go ahead and do these transformations conjecture what each one of these will do to the graph before you graph it so put those into your calculator and see what happens so looking at these this is my parent curve y equals 0.3 to the x that's going to be a decreasing function because b is less than 1 all of these go through 0 1 unless we do a translation and sure enough I did here and so what happens then is that uh, my point 0 1 gets translated to the left by negative 2 so I go left 2 so this will not go through 0 1 anymore that point got translated to negative 2 1 so in other words I make this left 2 same thing as any of your other parabola translations all those kinds of good things this one remember this became 10 thirds so what we did was we reflected this one over the y-axis compare the first and the third that's what we did now compare the first with the fourth this negative just takes all my y values and whatever was positive before makes them negative because I put that negative sign out in front so it's going to be reflected over the x-axis thank you for taking some good notes pausing and taking care of yourself Okay, moving on. Natural base E. Okay, now with this one, uh, Euler, Leonard Euler, uh, and it's pronounced Euler like that, but we write it here. That's how he wrote it. What he did was he developed these symbols for a lot of uh, things that we have. For instance, pi, he came up with the symbol for it. E he came up with that symbol as well what we want to look at then is in your calculator what happens to the limit as x goes to infinity of this quantity right here so go type y equals and put this into your calculator so I put y equals 1 plus 1 divided by x all raised to the x power and I look at the graph first of all I did this out to 50 so my x max is 50 Look what happens to this. This approaches a horizontal asymptote, so it does approach one specific value. And if you go ahead and trace, we can see that, well, it's something there. It's getting a little bit bigger, 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 2.672 regardless, okay? What we can do is also look at the table This isn't working for me. Come on. Well, I guess I can see the table right here. So looking at the table then, if I plug in 0, I get an error because I have some funny things going on there. If I plug in 1, I get 2. But as I plug in progressively higher numbers, this thing does increase. However, it does stabilize to 2.718 three or 2.72 to two decimal places and if you look here they look like the same number but they'll differ a little bit by a few decimal places here and there you can jump on top to see what they actually are but this is the value that we approach and this is a natural occurring number so they call it natural numbers a natural number and it is e uh, and i said that wrong it's not a natural number it's a natural base we call it e all right so this thing approximately equals e and in fact if we do the limit it does equal e so as we get for a bigger and bigger x we get 2.72 but then what it does equal exactly since it is an irrational number Euler called it e probably after his name and if you've seen this before we've seen a of t is equal to the pert formula some of you have seen that some of you have not but it's okay we'll go through that all right now let's talk about money okay with money our compounding formula here is this one right here this means amount after time t this is a function notation like f of x uh, but it is a of t it's not a times t few people get that confused but it's function notation a of t 
So this is equal to the principal P times whatever you're going to call your rate. Now what we do is if I give you a yearly rate, but I say I compound it monthly, I'm say for instance, I tell you I'm going to give you 6% per year compounded monthly. I'm not going to pay you 6% every month. So what I have to do is I have to take that 6% and I have to divide it by months, divide it by 12. 6% into 12 equal P says will give you the monthly interest rate or working interest rate that we do need. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to raise that to an exponent. Well, what exponent? Well, this right here, for instance, if N is uh, 12 and T, the number of years, is 3, that means I have 36 times that I apply this interest payment to you. And so that's why you multiply these together. Three years, monthly, 36. So that makes sense. So I apply this rate that many times. Now you also might ask, where does the one come from? Well, if I figure out the interest that a bank is going to pay me, I still have my original principal in the bank. And I can't exactly say that this is the distributed property, but that's what's happening here. P times one brings back my principal. So for instance, if I put in $1,000 in the bank, that $1,000 is still there, plus the additional amount that I'm getting here. So find out how much money we have if we have a principal of 1,000 invested in bank compounded quarterly at 2.5% interest for 10 years. 2.5 right now is very high. When I was your age, I was probably getting about 5% at the bank. Things are different, times are different. So what I do is I say the amount after 10 years, A of 10, not A times 10, is equal to my principal. So I'm just using this formula here. The one stays in there, and now look at what I did with this rate. I took 0 0.025 and I divided it by 4 because I'm compounding it quarterly. And that's the number of compoundings per year because I told you compounded quarterly. But I'm not going to pay you 2.5 each quarter. I'm going to divide it into four pieces. And then I'm going to raise it for uh, raise it to the power of the four quarters times 10 years. So I'm going to do 40 times. And if we crank this out, I get this amount here. Try that on your calculator and make sure you can get that value. Sometimes people have trouble putting this into your calculator, especially this exponent. And then what if we make n get bigger and bigger? So I did 12 here. And with 12, that means monthly. So I'm going to be compounding monthly. So my amount after 10 years is equal to my principal times 1 plus my rate divided by 12 raised to the 12 times uh, a year for 10 years. And look, I get a little bit more. So this shows the power of compounding. It doesn't look that much, but if you continue to put money in your bank month after month and you're compounding, 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 wow, it really makes a difference. Especially if you're earning 6 to 8% rather than 1 to 2%. Okay, now this one, this would be probably better if I wrote this out, but I'm going to kind of walk through it. What we want to get to is this PERT formula. And we can do a proof. I believe this is in your book, too, if you want to look at this. But how we get the PERT formula is that we can start off with this compounding formula that we have up here. And what we do is we do a little trick. And sometimes in mathematics, we do these proofs where we do tricks in order to sort things out. And that's what happens here. So in this, I'm going to take out the N, and I'm going to replace it with MR. And there's another one. So I take out the N and I replace it with MR. And what that does for me then is that I can cross out these R's and then I get MRT. <laughs> yeah, the MRT, good. And then if I keep on moving on, since the R's are canceled, I get 1 plus 1 over M raised to the M. And now this is... Uh, powers multi uh, exponents multiplied together and what that means then is that I can change it to a power to a power so I take this piece right here and I separate it out I hope you're taking really good notes right now so if I look at this and my goal here is to make this e quite quite honestly so if I got 1 plus 1 over m raised to the m power what happens is that this RT stays here what happens as m gets bigger and bigger and bigger
Now, having said that, that's the same thing as n getting bigger and bigger and bigger. n getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Here's 12. I could go 365. I could go seconds in a year, et cetera. But I want that n to go bigger. And since mr is equal to n, r is fixed, m is going to get bigger as well. So that's what I'm saying here. As n goes to infinity, m goes to infinity. So I'm going to take the limit as m goes to infinity. My principal times this quantity in here. Well, what is this equal? As m goes to infinity. As we did with our calculator to investigate it a little bit, it turns out to be e. And so I'm going to get e to the rt. So this quantity right in here is the same thing as my e. That's how we get the PERT formula. Now, what we might ask you is then, what happens if I compound continuously? And so you can figure out this value on your calculator, but we take the amount for 10 years, and I'm just using the PERT formula here. Principal is 1,000, E raised to the, and you might have to put this in parentheses. Now, the, only, the other thing is on your calculator, where is the E to use? Well, there's two places and my eyes are failing me, but I believe there's one here. That's E with no exponent. Since we are using the exponents, let's use this one right here. So I got to go second LN. So if I want to do this, I have to go second LN. This is not cooperating with me today. Nice. Okay, so I think you can figure that out. There it is, and then it has the little exponent there. Some of you will just have the parentheses, and you can put um, the exponents in the parentheses there. All right, that is an introduction to exponential functions. Make sure you get in there and graph these and play around with these. You do have a homework assignment that's at the bottom of your page, and there it is. Okay, so you can go to the book and do that. Um, quite possibly, I'm asking you to do this in class, and then you should be able to do the 3.2 video after that. Thank you. Have a great day.